Hi everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got something very exciting to go over with you guys. We're gonna talk about continued training. And this is kind of a very important piece for me in my career because I've always had really good people that helped train me to be who I am today. And I feel that as you progress through your career, it's your responsibility to train the people that are gonna follow after you. So let's go over a few of the things that I do to help train some of the people that work on my team. I just got a random assortment of things here on this table, some of the things that we do. We're gonna start right here. Um, these are flashcards, and these are from the CBET certification. And we are gonna start on my team, randomly pulling these out of a box and reading them off. And if nobody can come up with the answer, we're gonna research it. So that's the first thing, and this is something that my team is gonna start doing very soon. Uh, I just, in fact, brought those in today because I usually study them at home myself. Uh, some of the other things that we do is I often hand out soldering kits uh, to my, my associates and to junior level biomeds. I've been doing it for years, probably over a decade actually. And uh, you can see a couple of them back here, you know. I've got some that uh, my current associate, he's a biomed too, and uh, he's a very motivated dude, and he's uh, working on a few things with me. He doesn't know it yet, but I've got him one of these guys. This is a do-it-yourself assembly of an oscilloscope. And we're going to be working on that very soon. This one's mine. I'm going to assemble it, and then he's going to have his. He's going to assemble his and we're going to compare them and contrast them. Um, so we got the soldering kits. Uh, this is uh, another soldering kit that I've issued out. I've got the oscilloscope kit, so it's not only a practical tool, but he's gonna be assembling his own tool. Um, and that one can be kind of complex because there's different layers like the LCD panel, the LCD controller, and the measuring board and they're kind of sandwiched together. So you have to be careful as you assemble them. Um, so that one's gonna be a good a good and inexpensive way to learn how to uh, be delicate. We work on things like this guy right here. Uh, I'm gonna have him be working on a project to repair a bunch of these boxes. And the problem is, is these cords are breaking off pins so what we're going to do is I ordered a, uh, a few mini DIN, 8-pin mini DIN cables, and we're going to cut the mini DINs in half. And according to the pinout, you can see right here, there's, there's four cables that come in here. So we're going to string the new cable. It's going to come up into here. We're going to clip this guy off, and it's going to get soldered to the new cable. And I'm going to have my Biomed 2 doing that project. So that's going to be some real good learning experience form. Uh, some of the other things that we do, you see right here, I've got a tin of various failed components. I've got relays, you can see I got three relays there. I've got some electrolytic capacitors, and uh, you know each of these have some pretty good signs that they're in the process of failing, but it's a physical example of not only uh, what it will look like, but how it functions so we can actually measure these. And you might be thinking, why is that important? Well, if you are working on a board and let's say you got a failed relay, there's certain things that you can look out for. It might clickety clack when you apply power, but that doesn't actually mean that the contacts are touching. So I've got different examples. I've got one relay that will sit there and buzz, it won't click over. I've got one that's latched permanently, uh, normally open. It's latched closed. I've got another one right here that uh, will buzz, um, and then sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've got a whole bunch of these. You can see I got various MOS, MOSFETs in here. Excuse me, I can't talk this morning. It's very, very early in the morning. So I came in early so I can record this video. I've got various MOSFETs, and almost every single one of them is going to be a shorted out MOSFET because. That's how MOSFETs fail. They, they 90 some percent of the time, they short out across the pins. And you can see I have various types of MOSFETs. I got tiny little ones, I got giant ones. I've got some, um, what is that, uh, power regulator, which basically is just a 
another diode or MOSFET, but they're all shorted. And it's, it's a physical example. You can whip out your multimeter and you can test each and every single one of these. And we'll go over that. Um, so I'll go over that with my biomeds and show them what it looks like when these components fail. Some of the other things that we do, uh, you can see back here, I keep right on my hand, I got the Biomeds Handbook. This is by Walter Brisebois. And uh, Walter is a pretty good dude. He's very active online. And he wrote an excellent book. Uh, this guy right here goes over the various types of medical equipment because every day I'm gonna find some sort of device that I can't completely explain what it does. I know how they use it, sort of, but with this book, I can instantly look it up or I can reference the book and I can tell my other biomeds, hey, go look it up in the book. And then he'll get a more specific answer than what I can do. Because I don't like just shooting any information out if I don't exactly know the answer. Um, so we'll YouTube it or uh, we'll look it up in a book. Um, that's almost all the stuff that we got. You can also see right here, I've got some functional jigs. And these, these are jigs for testing uh, different types of ESUs. And uh, that's another thing that we'll use for training because instead of just using uh, an OEM jig that you know might have an inline resistor or something, I will demonstrate that using a whole bunch of resistors together will actually change the values and so you can see I got a couple different types there I got a couple higher wattage ones and some lower wattage ones and it also gives a very good example of uh, wattage and how much wattage the resistors can take because these ones here you can feel them after a short burn they get reasonably warm and these ones here the ceramic they hardly ever get warm so it's just another physical example of, of the trace of electricity and making some of these jigs. You might have to make a jig in the field. Hurry up and make it because you got to test some equipment. And you don't always have the OEM jig. I mean, how many shops have all their test equipment in their bags at all times? So sometimes you have to make a jig. And that's what these are a, a perfect example of. But anyway, guys, I just want to show you real quick some of the stuff I do to help train biomeds that are junior level biomeds. And it just gets them in the right frame of the mind and it brings them back to some of their origins because we do fix electronics. We don't just ship stuff out to manufacturers. And sometimes we have to know the clinical applications of a certain type of device. Sometimes we want to prep our mind, get us ready for certification if you want to progress down that route. So there we are, guys. I hope you like this video. It's a short one, but I just want to show you some of the stuff I do to help my junior biomeds, okay? Hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up if you do, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.